Lotus. It's a car brand both admired and revered in the automotive world. Steeped in British motorsport history, it was started by motorsport enthusiast Colin Chapman, who had a simple philosophy, simplify, then add lightness. Lotus say that ultimately the only way to truly understand a Lotus is to drive it. So let's get on with it, shall we? It's a supercar, but not a supercar. If you're looking for something that can compete with the likes of Lamborghini and Ferrari, it doesn't cost the earth to run and maintain, and doesn't have the drinking appetite like an elephant, then you need to check out what Lotus has to offer. This is a Lotus Exige S240. The 240 refers to the amount of horsepower that we have here behind a very thin piece of perspex behind me. Power to weight ratio in this car is off the hook. This uh, car only weighs 944 kilos. Okay, with me in it, it weighs well over a ton, to be honest with you. However, let's not dwell on that. Uh, but the car has an amazing 1.8 litre supercharged four cylinder engine supplied by Toyota, surprisingly enough. But from that engine, it powers out 240 brake horsepower. Now, when you combine that with 944 kilos, that's some serious performance. Zero to 100 in 3.8 seconds, which definitely competes with Ferraris and Lamborghinis around the tracks. That's supercar territory. Man, you can hear the crackle of the engine here. I'm only going 100 kilometers an hour or just under just to get accelerate up to 100 kilometers an hour for the sake of the viewers. But the noise from the from the engine is just, yeah, it's nice. And that little crackle from the exhaust really hits the sweet spot. The air for the supercharger is supplied by one big scoop on the top of this roof. And it's sucked straight through directly into the supercharger that's bolted onto the top of the engine. And because it's bolted onto the top of the engine and it's directly behind me, I can't see through the rear view mirror, well there is no rear view mirror in this car, so I literally have no vision out the back, it's just a supercharger. This car is tiny, now check this out, I have a Mercedes Benz coming up to me right now, and it's not even a big Mercedes Benz, it's a B180, and my eye level is pretty much at the top of the wheel rims of that car. I'm pretty low. I'm leaving skid marks down the road. Uh, just changed onto a bit of a rougher stretch of road and it'd be rough. It'd be, you can feel everything through this car. It's not even a, I wouldn't even say it's a rough stretch of road, but far out. No power steering <laughs> makes all the difference. Uh, you can feel every single morsel pebble that you drive over on this, just on a normal road. It is, it's something special. It's something different. It's not for everybody, that's for sure. This is a car that's been built for the racetrack that you can drive legally on the road. You can drive it to the racetrack and drive it home again. That's how convenient it is. The exterior styling of the Exige is certainly not to everyone's taste. I wouldn't say it's overly offensive, but more styled to an acquired taste mainly those who just want to go really, really fast. I think Lotus were more concerned with the performance side of things more than the styling, but it paid off. The interior of the Exige is simple and effective. In a car like this, there is no need for too many driver aids. In fact, that's the whole purpose of this car. Raw and exciting, virtually relying on the driver's skill alone. A stereo and air conditioning are about all you get in terms of interior features, and the obligatory fire extinguisher for those racing mishaps. The exhaust sits centre to the car, offering an ear-splitting engine note. 
but would you look at the size of that diffuser? It's no wonder the car handles like it's on rails, as this helps increase grip, reducing aerodynamic drag. Getting in and out of the car is no easy task either, especially if you are tall. I literally had to fold in half to get into the driver's seat, with the door swung fully open. So good luck if you have a car parked right next to you. Once inside the cabin though, the driver has ample legroom, which is surprisingly sufficient for such a small car. But let's face it, it's not the type of car that you would want to be getting in and out of too many times throughout the course of the day. And there you have it, the old bend in half and get into the car trick. But enough about all that, let's get back to what the Exige was designed for, that pure driving experience. It's a race car built for the road. So, just a little skip and a jump there. The more you drive it, the more confident you get. But you don't want to get too overconfident because I reckon this car will take you to pieces if you do. You've got to find the right balance and the right level of respect for it and you're in for a whole lot of fun. whatsoever apart from really a stereo and air conditioning. So the question still stands, is it any good? Bloody oath it is. It's a car that's oozing speed and longing for a driver that wants to enjoy it. It's like a dog that just wants to play all the time. This car just wants to play and play hard. Even I was surprised at how many heads turned when I was driving this thing. It's not a look at me car, but you can't help but admire the performance output from such a small unit. It really does put a smile on your face. The car has a bit of a shudder. It's a bit of a shudder when you really give it a good throttle burst. It's like, whoa, whoa. I'm not sure if I can handle this, but I will try. I will try. Yeah, baby. It's fun to the max. That's what this is. It's an extreme sense of driving. It's loud, it's brash, it's noisy, it's unnecessary. It's wonderful. Go fast. 